chapter. The 24th chapter of the book of 1 Samuel. Right. And we get it, please say amen. Amen. First time of the 24th chapter. And we're going to look at verses, uh, verse 4. Yeah. And then we're going to look down at verse 10 through 11. Amen. We're going to look at verse 4 and then verse 10 through 11. And the word of God reads as follows. Then the men of David said to him, This is the day of which the Lord said to you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, yeah. that you may do to him as it seems good to you. Yeah. David arose and secretly cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Yeah. Verse 10 says, Look, this day your eyes have seen the Lord deliver you today into my hand in the cave. And someone urged me to kill you, but my eye spared you. And I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Yeah. Moreover, my father, see, yes, the, the corner of your robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you. Yeah. Know and see that there is neither evil nor rebellion in my hand. Yeah. I have not sinned against you, yet you hunt my life to take it. Verse 12 and 13, they say, Let the Lord judge between you and me, and let the Lord uh, avenge me on you. But my hand shall not be against you. As the proverb of the ancients say, Wickedness proceeds from the wicked, but my hand shall not be against you. God's word for God's people. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to lift up verse 10 where it says, Look this day, your eyes have, been, have seen that the Lord delivered you into my hand in the cave. And someone urged me to kill you, but I spared you. And I said, I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Amen. I want to use uh, for a subject for just a, a few moments. I won't uh, wait your patience long. But I want to use for a topic, uh, don't make me go there. All right. I'm going to use for a subject, don't make me go there. Don't, don't, don't make me go there. Amen. Uh, many of you on November the 24th uh, at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, you stayed up in tiptoe anticipation waiting on the verdict uh, in, in, in Ferguson, Missouri in the trial of, 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 of Darren Wolf's and I will admit to you that on that particular night, we saw the justice system gone wild. Amen, amen. Uh, here we have uh, St. Louis Prosecutor Bob McCullough, who in my personal opinion coerced the, the jury, which was made up of nine whites and three blacks, to lean not towards charging Officer Darren Wilson at all. Amen. Here we have a prosecutor who has possibly a conflict of interest because his family has deep roots in the police force, his father, his mother, his brother, his uncle, his cousin, all work for the St. Louis Police Department. Now his father was killed while responding to a call by a black suspect. So now many people believe that the connections that he has in the police force caused him to be, not able to be, caused him to be biased towards uh, Michael Brown. Now, we know that Michael Brown was shot on, our, on August the 9th by a local police officer by the name of Darren Wilson, who was a Caucasian gentleman. Now, I, I, I have a, an issue with the whole thing because when I learned that uh, through Facebook and I learned through GoFundMe.com, uh, he, he, he was given $500,000 from GoFundMe.com and Facebook and then he received another $500,000 from ABC to do an exclusive interview. So if you add $500,000 plus $500,000, that, that equals a million dollars. Let alone he was on paid leave when, during the trial. Let alone he got married before he ever heard the verdict. Uh, what, what, what is strange to me is that before the verdict was ever read, 
you had barricades in the street. Before the verdict was ever read, you had stores boarding up their windows, boarding up their doors, stores shutting down before the verdict was ever read. So my question now is, did somebody know something before they read the verdict? All right, all right, all right. Did somebody have a clue or indication that he was going to get off before the verdict was ever read? My question now is, was there really a fair trial? Can they justify his use of force on this young 18-year-old boy who was unarmed but shot down in the street? Because if you ever look at where young Michael Brown was shot, he was shot at least six to eight times. In the forearm, in the bicep, in the chest, possibly the neck, twice in the head, one in the right eye, and one in the top of the head. Can you justify that much force on an unarmed black man? Now, the office, now, now, the, now, those who did the investigation, they found out, that, or, or they saw, that he was at least 150 feet away from the, from the police officer's vehicle when he was found dead. So that means that you had some distance between you and him. But if you saw the interview that, that, that Darren Wilson had, he said that Michael Brown looked like a, 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 a some sort of animal coming at him. He looked like some kind of beast coming at him. And, 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 and in the interview, he said, if I had it to do all over again in so many words, I would have done things the same way. I would have shot him and I would have taken his life. He said, I was only doing what I was trained to do. Now, this is not the first case where where the killer of a, of a young uh, African-American man got away. It's not the first case, because of those of you who know your history, back in 1955, down in a place called Money, Mississippi, yeah, there was a young boy whose nickname was Bobo. Y'all know Emmett Till. Let me come get you one time. Uh, yeah, he, he was killed by a gentleman by the name of J.W. Malam and Roy Bryant because he made because he so-called whistled at a Caucasian woman in a convenience store. So now they kidnap him, and, 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 and they tied a cotton gin fan around his neck that weighed him down in the water. This is after they beat him and shot him in the face. Okay, let, let me shock you one time. Now, they gave illustration in, a, in, in, in an article or in an interview about how they killed him, and they received $4,000. Come here, Darren Wilson. He got five hundred thousand from from GoFundMe.com and Facebook, and then he got another five hundred thousand from ABC. He became a millionaire because he killed a black child. Now, in the case of Emmett Till, they found this man guilty. They knew they were guilty, but if you ask the jury, they said, "Well, we don't we don't feel as though life in prison well, is it, suitable for two white men during this time, even though we know that they're guilty." Now, come here, Oscar Grant. Those of you, 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 you read the story about, uh, or you saw the movie Fruitville Station. Here we have a young man, Oscar Grant, who was killed in, 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 a, in a transit, in a transit uh, subway station. Yeah, he was on the ground, and the officer came up to him and told him to give him his hands, but he would not give his hands up to be, to be handcuffed because he was trying to figure out why are you coming at me like this? Yeah. Well, what, what have I done to warrant you to want to arrest me and detain me? Uh -huh. yes, and then the officer that shot him, uh, uh, jo Johannes uh, Mazzarelli, he said that he went for his, he thought was his gun, was his taser, but it ended up being his gun, and he shot young Oscar Grant in the back. Mind you, he only got two years. Two years for murder, yeah. Come, come here, Trayvon. I, I, I gotta come get you too. You know what happened back in February 2012 at the hands of George Zimmerman. Uh -huh. he, he pleaded or he used the, the stand your ground law, law and said, I killed him, but I was standing my ground. Uh -huh. uh, last time I said, I thought stand your ground was inside the house, the castle law, yeah. Meaning if I'm inside my house and I can't go anywhere, the law says that, that, that the law that, that, that my house is my domain and I don't have to leave my house. I can defend my house. That's what I thought the standing ground law was. Uh -huh. But those of you who, who ever found out the history of standing your ground, you will find out that it actually it actually was initiated back in 1995. 
It didn't just happen in 2012, but it was initiated back in 1995 in a little city called Springfield, Oregon. Yeah, there was a local mechanic who went to a fast food restaurant, walked up behind a man, walked up behind a man who was eating lunch and blew his brains out. And he justified his actions by saying he felt that the man was, was threatening his daughter and he was a local drug dealer. But my issue is that at the time he was not messing with you. At the time he was minding his own business and you just walked up on him. So now the law says, okay, if you feel threatened in any way, depending on what state you're in, you can stand your ground and just shoot somebody down. But my question is, was the law for us? Yeah. Was the law written for us or was it not for us? Because y'all remember, come in, Marissa Alexander, you know the woman down in Florida, whose husband was beating on her. She had just given birth to a child nine, nine days prior to that. Yeah, yeah, she, she was her, her husband had, she, she had locked herself in the bathroom because she felt threatened for her life. Her husband broke in the door and, 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 and told her, I, I kill you. But she fired a warning shot, did not shoot anybody in the house, but fired a warning shot. And they were trying to give her 20 years initially. And then a young lady, a state attorney by the name of Angela Corey, trying to give her 60 years for firing a warning shot inside the house. But yet she said I was standing my ground because I was inside my house trying to defend myself because I felt my life was threatened. But I want to say this. That it just goes to show that the judicial system was not really meant to be in our favor. Can I be honest today? Can I try to stay away from social events? I try to stay away from, 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 from social economic events, but sometimes I just can't help it because, the, the, I, I, I'll be honest, the black church long time ago was a place where we got our information from. It was in the black church that we found out who we were. We found out the reason why we stand for what we stand for. So we cannot lose the essence of our church. Yeah, amen. We cannot lose the essence of our church. Yeah. But it makes you question, was the law ever really in our favor? Yeah. Were the laws ever really in our favor? Now, as we look at our story today in the text of, of, of our chapter 24, the book of 1 Samuel, here we have a man by the name of David, who was anointed by God, who, who, who had a, a grown man seeking his life because he was threatened by him. Now, because now by the time we get to, we get to chapter 24, this was not the first altercation that David had with Saul. Now, it was not the first one, but it was a, 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 it was a, a span of time that David had to deal with somebody that was seeking his life. Because y'all know that, that when, when after David killed Goliath and he was coming back to the city, the ladies and the women were singing songs. David and Saul had killed his thousands, but David had killed his tens of thousands. And then Saul got jealous. You see, whenever somebody's praising you and they praising somebody else, the person that has not been praised, they don't get mad at you because the people are building and lifting you up because of what you've done. So now, so now, so now, on another occasion after that, Saul was having some issues, okay? He was having some, some evil spirits were tormenting him. And they, they, they said, well, well, David could play real good. David could play the harp. Uh -huh. So now David goes into Saul's room. I mean, and, and as he plays, he, he begins to become consoled and began to get sued. But, but at the moment of time, he threw a spit at David and David ducked and is stuck in the wall. Uh -huh. So he was trying to take David's life because he was upset with him. He was angry at him. He was jealous at him. And, I, and one thing I've learned is this, that when somebody is jealous of you, they want to take your life. When somebody does not like you, when they can't stand you, when they don't understand you, when they recognize the power you have, when they recognize how anointed you are, they quite, they quite naturally are going to want to take your life because quite naturally you're making them look bad. Then, 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 then one time after that, shortly after that, Saul sent men to David's house when he was laying in bed with, 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 with his daughter. All right? He said, oh, oh. he said, okay, um, oh, we want to kill David. We want to kill him tonight. But, 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 but Saul's daughter, Micah, she put an idol in the bed and made it look like David was asleep. 
and David escaped. But the whole time Saul was trying to take his life. And prior to David ever even marrying Micah, Saul's daughter, he told David, well, now you, you, you know the story about, about David and Goliath, how Saul said that whatever man defeats Goliath, I'll let you marry my daughter. So, 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 so rightfully, Saul should have let David marry his daughter without, without, any, without anything else he had to do. But now he said, David, if you want to marry my daughter, I need you to go and capture for 100 foreskin of the Philistine men. David should not have ever had to do that because Saul had already issued what the reward about whoever, whoever defeated Goliath will receive. But now because he hated David so much, his intent was to put David in battle and David be killed. But why is this? Because you are so anointed. When the enemy tries to set you up, you prevail, amen, because God had your back, amen. It's amazing how when the enemy tries to set traps for you, God will help you walk right on through it, amen, because God protects his investments. I know sometimes you, you look at your own life, you wonder why God, after all of my haters, after all my haters try to do to me, why am I still here? God, after all my haters try to do to me, why am I still in my right mind? That's because God anointed you to handle everything that you've been through. Check this out. At the age of 17, David was anointed. Yes, he was. He was anointed by Samuel. So what David was doing, he was walking in his anointing. Amen. You see, sometimes you don't know how anointed you are until your enemy tries to set trap for you, amen. And when you come out smiling with your head held high, you look at your enemy you hear. You thought you had it, but God had my back. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. God had my back, amen. Yeah. And then later on, after that, Saul told his son Jonathan and the others to assassinate David. Yeah. You see, when you're so anointed, everybody's not going to like you. But when, when folk recognize that God in you, everybody's not going to pat you on the back. When folk recognize how strong you are, everybody's not going to be on your team. Sometimes you wonder why, how, why you got so many haters. That's because you're anointed and you're strong. Amen. That's right. And then when I look at us in America, I know this ain't February, I know this ain't Black History Month, but, I, black, but black history is every month. Yeah. But when you look at us as a people, yeah. I know sometimes folk look at us and say, how in the world are you still standing yeah. after 400 years of slavery? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you were sold in saddle slavery. How in the world are you still able to come to church and give praise to God who allowed you to go through what you went through? Yeah. yeah. Come here, come here, elders. Come here, come here. Yeah. How in the world were our elders still able to give God praise and glory in the cotton fields, in the tobacco fields, when they knew it was hot or when they knew it was extra cold? Somehow they got connected to God and said, God, if I'm here, I must be here for a reason. If I'm here, you must know I can handle what I'm going through. Come on, because I am. I'm anointed, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, because I'm anointed, yeah. yeah. So now, so now, so now, as we come to the 24th chapter of the book of First Samuel, we find we find David hiding in a cave yeah. because he's yeah. running from Saul. Yeah. He does not want to put his hands on Saul, even though he could. Please don't make me go there. Yeah. Uh -huh. I could reach out and touch you, but I ain't going to go there. Yeah. I, I, I know some things. I could do some things to you, but I ain't going to put my hands on you. Yeah. David was a warrior. Come here, Dave, for a second. David told Saul when he was, when he was about to fight the lion, he said, you know, I fought bears and I fought lions. Yeah. Because they try to get my sheep. So check this out. If he fought a lion and if he fought a bear, Saul was no competition for him. But, but, but David must have recognized because I'm God's anointed, yeah. Because I know who I am. Because I know I don't have to lay a hand on you. I'm going to let God fight this battle for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, can I be honest? Sometimes we want to put our hands on situations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because sometimes folk push us to their place. We'll be like, enough is enough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Here we have David in the cave, okay? And his boys were saying, Dave, Saul is right here. The NLT says Saul went in the cave to relieve himself, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. And, and, and David's boys like, Dave, here he is. What you gonna do, player? Uh -huh. Well, you, 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 you gonna handle your business or what? You know how you got them friends there, yeah. You, I'm right, well, I'm down with you. What you trying to do, yeah. They, they, they pump you up because they know they know what you can do. They know how you get down. Go, hey, 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 Dave, go ahead and do it. This your, hey, this your time, player. Go ahead and do it. Yeah. 
But, but instead of David killing Saul, okay, instead of David killing Saul, he cut off a piece of his robe. Okay. Woo. Now, that is saying something to us today. Okay. Come, come, come here, Ferguson. Yeah, come here, Ferguson. Now, when I, when I saw our brothers and sisters out there, Ferguson, flipping out because of this trial, I, I felt their pain. I felt it. I felt what the mother was going through. Even though it was not my child, I somewhat vicariously felt what she was going through. It was painful because a murderer of your child got away. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. And so now the, 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 there were those of Ferguson who did not go about retaliating or demonstrating in a peaceful manner, but they began to burn up stores. They begin to flip police cars over, set police cars on fire. Yeah. Now, now, I understand what they did and why they did it, but I would not have gone about it that way. Because there's a, there's a way to do everything. But once again, I understand why. They said, well, if you're going to take something from me, I'm going to take something from you. Yeah. If you're going to take something from me, I'm going to reach out and touch you. Yeah. But here in the case of David, yeah, David says, I'm not going to touch you. But I'm going to touch something that belongs to you. What am, what am I saying? Okay. I know some of y'all are like, Pastor, where you going with this? You see, every now and then, okay, you, 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 you want to touch somebody because they're doing you wrong. Yeah. Every now and then, you want to touch somebody because they're coming out their mouth the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. Every now and then, you want to touch somebody because of how they're treating you, because of how you look. Because of where you come from, because of because of your of, of your social status, because of your economic background, because of your educational status, they hate on you. Every now and then, you want to show them I'm not a punk. Don't try to play me. You don't know me like that. Yeah. Don't let the smile fool you. Yeah. Don't let the fact that I'm laughing all the time fool you. Because in the back of my mind, I could be scheming up something. Yeah. But don't get it twisted. But but don't make me go there. Don't, 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 don't make me go there. Please don't make me go there. But notice how David cut some stuff off. Now I want to say this. We, we, we don't want to put our hands on anybody, but we do want to cut some stuff off. I know some of you may be asking the question, well, Pastor Preacher, what am I going to cut off to get, to get at those who, the powers that be, okay? The first thing that I'm going to cut off is my mind. I'm going to cut off access to my mind from you. Okay. I'm not going to any longer allow you to infiltrate my mind and put thoughts in my mind and tell me who I am, but I'm going to learn who I am by reading a book. Okay. Okay. Come in, young people. I need, to, I, need, I need to mess with my young people. I need to get up in my young people's Kool-Aid for a second. And, and, and I, 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 I observe this right here, that a lot of our young people they are, in fact, the way they are because of social media. Uh -huh. A lot of our young people today are the way they are because of Facebook, yeah. Uh -huh. Because of YouTube, yeah. Because if all you do is when you get home or from, from school, you, you get on your iPad or your iPod or your laptop, and all you do is look at world star hip-hop all day and look at fights all day. Uh -huh. Quite naturally, when you go to school, you're going to want to fight somebody, yeah. yeah. Yeah, quite, quite, quite naturally, if that's all you're downloading in your mind, if that's all you're downloading in your spirit, then quite naturally, that's what you're going to want to do. Yeah. Nowadays, so many of our young people are confused as to who they are because of social media. Mm -hmm. Social media says, be who you are, do what you want to do, yeah. Go against the normalities of things, yeah. So now we have young men who want to be girls and young girls who want to be men. Now, now they're confused yeah, yeah. because of this thing called social media. But if I cut my mind off to you, yeah, and if I begin to read books and understand who I am and, and build up my own self-esteem, and, and if I begin to read my word and find out who I am in God's eye and God's perspective, then you will no longer have control over my mind. There's nothing more powerful than a person who knows who they are. There's nothing more powerful than a person who has a powerful mind. Notice the first thing a person or the enemy goes after is your mind. But cut off access to the mind. The next thing we need to cut off access is the finances. If I cut you off by not giving you my money, yeah, 
then you then you gonna really think I'm crazy, yeah. If 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 I cut off access to my money, because notice, 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 in the black community. We are the only community whose, whose money leaves out of our community, but it never comes back. We are the only community, once we, when we begin to spend money, when we get our paycheck, we go to the mall. We don't own the mall. When we get our paycheck, we go to the check cash place. We don't own it. We don't own the check cash place. When we get our paycheck, we go to the hair store place. Yeah. yeah. We don't even own that. Yeah. yeah. And they sell more black hair care products in the store, but we don't own nothing of that. Yeah. But when our money leaves our community, it never returns. But if we begin to cut off our finances and say, you know what? I'm going to find a black owned business. I'm going to support that. But see, because we don't trust each other. Because we, because I, I'm afraid that you're going to get too far ahead than me. Yeah. Because I'm afraid you're going to buy a better car than me. Because I'm afraid you're going to live in a better house than me if I support you. Then I'll take my money somewhere else. And then we begin to complain about other folk outside of our outside of our race getting rich. Okay. Oh, but if I cut my money off from you and and, and if I learn how to pool our money, if we learn how to pool our money together and stop spending so much money, because check this out. Notice how folk who have money, they brag about how much money they save. But black folk, we brag about, we brag about how much money we spent. Okay. Now, have you ever found somebody that went to the store, they bought a pair of KDs or, or LeBrons, and they brag about, I spent $250 for these. All right, all right. <laughs> but six months later, that same shoe, somebody else comes around, well, I only paid $79 for them. All right. <laughs> But you done borrowed out of control and paid two hundred and fifty dollars for the same pair of shoes, and we brag about it. Yeah, but that money could have been on a bill. Yeah, that money could have been in the bank drawing interest. But we brag about how much money we spent. Yeah, that's why it, it, it gets on my nerves when I see all these rappers bragging about how much money they spent on their grill, how much money they spent in their cars, how much money they spent on their rims, bragging about it, and we so ignorant, we so stupid, y'all forgive me for saying this, but we put more money in their pockets, and they bragging about what they have, but we the ones giving them what they have in the first place. And then they throw it back up in your face, yeah, I got a big ride, yeah, I got a big Benz, I got a big Bentley, I got a big Rolls Royce. But you are the one that helped them get it. Now look at yourself, what did you have? You living in the projects, fighting over some shoes on Black Friday, and got nothing to show for your money, yeah. And if you do have a car, your car looks better than your house, your rims cost more than your furniture, something is wrong. Something is wrong. We have a problem, Houston. But if we cut off finances, amen, to learn how to build our own businesses and let them know that I really don't need you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we can have our own because if you look at back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, we have more black-owned businesses than we have now. We had our own banks. We had our own bus companies. We had our own clothing stores. But nowadays, look at what do we have. That's right. That's the truth. Now they we're making more money, but we don't have anything to show for it. But if we cut it off, amen, let them know that I don't have to touch you, but I can touch something that belongs to you. And when I start going in your pockets and not give you the money that I have, you're going to think I lost my mind, amen. Then I can get your attention. But now we see that David cut off Saul's robe. After his boys told him, kill him, but David cut off the robe, yeah, a piece of him. And after he cut the piece of the robe off, he was troubled in his spirit because he said, the, the, the Lord forbid that I, that I should do this thing to my master. He had so much, he had so much respect for Saul. He said, you know what? I, 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 I can't kill you. Yeah. And I feel bad just for cutting off your robe. Yeah. Now, now, the Bible does say we respect those in authority. Yeah. It does say respect the laws of the land. Yeah. Now, I would say that we have to respect those who make the laws. Yeah, we got to respect the governors and the congressmen and, and the police. But at the same time, you got to know who you are. Yeah. At the same time, you got to understand the power that you have. Now, but David said that David felt bad because he cut off Saul's robe. And then finally, when we get down to, to verse 10, 
He says, look this day. Your eyes have seen that the Lord delivered you into my hand in the cave. So in essence, what was David saying to Saul? David was saying, Saul, I could have reached out and touched you. Yeah. yeah. Saul, David was saying, Saul, I could have put my hands on you. Yeah. David said, Saul, I could have taken your life. Yeah. David said, Saul, I could have taken you out of here, but I didn't because he said, I had the opportunity to, but I did not take advantage of that. He said, someone urged me to kill you, but I spared you. And I said I would not stretch out my hand against my Lord, against my Lord's anointing. Oh, my goodness. But, but I like what verse 12 says. Let the Lord judge between me and you. And let the Lord avenge me on you. But my hand shall not be against you. Verse 13 says, as the proverb of the ancients say, wickedness proceeds from the wicked, but my hand shall not prevail against you. What was David saying there? Saul, I'm not going to put my hands on you, but I'm going to let God fight my battle. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to get a hood on you, Saul. Yeah. I'm not going to pop the trunk on you, Saul. Yeah. I'm not going to empty the clip out on you, Saul, but I'm going to let God fight my battle. Yeah. Because if you ever finish reading the story, you'll find out that one day Saul was out at war and he was fighting. And the Philistines wounded Saul real bad. Yeah. And Saul said, I cannot die at the hands of the Philistines. And he urged his armor bearers to kill him. But, 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 but and that's what happened. Saul fell on, the, on his own sword. So he ended up taking his life. So what happened? David said, I'm not going to put my hands on you, but I'm going to let God take care of you. You see, God knows how to take care of your issues. God knows how to take care of your problems. So the next time you find yourself with a, with a, with a knock at your bucket, say, look, I ain't going to touch you. I'm going I'm, I'm to walk away and I'm going to let God take care of this. Now, folk may call you a punk. Folk may call you a sissy. Folk may call you a cello. Folk may call you soul. But just let God take care of your battle because he told your host of the battle is not yours, but it's mine. The battle belongs to me. The battle belongs to me. And I love what Psalm 37 and 7 says. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Psalm 37, 12 to 13 says. The wicked plot against the just. And gnash at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him. So just know that when your haters are coming up against you and you and your anointed self, he's laughing at them, yeah. Because they think they're doing something, yeah. When they make you cry, they think they're doing something. When they stab you in the back, they think they're doing something. When they talk about you and scandalize your name, they think they're doing something. But the whole time, God is laughing. He's like, you don't even know who you meant to a player, yeah. Dog, you don't even know who, who my child belongs to. You don't even know who she belongs to. You don't even know who he belongs to. But you gotta be careful who you mess with. That's right. <laughs> because he sees that his day is coming again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm reminded of our, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. He came to a place where he, he went. He could have went there if he wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Because y'all remember how he was in the Garden of Gethsemane yeah. and Peter got mad because they put hands on Jesus. Yeah. He said, you got some friends. They don't want nothing to happen to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are yeah. uh, oh, they mess with you? Oh, I'm about to get out of it. But see, they, but see, Jesus told Peter, yeah. said, Peter, put away your soul. Live out of sword, die by the sword. Yeah. And then Jesus let him know, know that if I wanted to, I can call on the Father and he would send down 12 leaders of angels. If I wanted to, yeah. And that's what Jesus was telling Peter. Peter, if I wanted to go there, I can get it on a pop it up in here, yeah. Don't think because I'm meek, humble, and mild, I'm weak, yeah. You see, some folk, they think because you're humble, you're weak. Some folk think just because you're quiet, you're soft, yeah. yeah. Some folk just because you don't talk a whole lot, they can take advantage of you, yeah. yeah. Some people just think, they think, they think, they think that just because you smile a lot, yeah, you, you, laugh, you laugh some stuff off, you smoke some stuff off, yeah. they think you're real soft, but they, but they don't even know that that humbleness is power under control. Yeah. So, if you can be honest, you can say, some folk best be glad you can handle yourself, you can control yourself. Some folk best be glad your temper ain't as quick as it used to be. Some folk best be glad you don't go from 0 to 60 in, in, in 2.9 seconds like you used to be. Some 
folks still don't know who they mess with, they man. Because just because a pit bull, he's a he's a pit bull by nature, yeah. And he may have been tame and taught to do certain things, but check this out, he's still a pit bull. Yeah. He, he, he still has some fight in him, yeah. He still has that, 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 that he, he may have some passive aggression now because he's been trained, but, but he still has it in him. So please don't ever get it twisted, today, man. Ooh, but don't pick it, go there. Come here, Jesus, I'm, I, I'm trying to close right now, but, but we can see Jesus himself. He was he he was in the hands of an unjust or oh, or oh, or oh, of a, uh, in in an unjust legal system because they tried him at nighttime. They tried our Lord and Savior at nighttime, which was illegal. Yeah. He had no witnesses to to testify on his behalf. That was illegal. Yeah. He was for he was uh, he was uh, he was uh, guilty before he was ever brought to trial. That was illegal. Yeah. He was he was falsely accused by a system that made his own rules. That was illegal. Yeah. And see, check this out. Even through the, throughout the whole process, he maintained his composure. You see, when you know who you are, and when you, when you know who your daddy is. Is, you will maintain your composure. I know and, and I know sometimes you want to go off, but just sit back and maintain because check this out. When they put him on the cross and when he died and gave up the ghost, they thought that was it. They thought they had him down for the count. But I serve a God that will lift you back up. Amen. When they're kicking you down and when they're trying to hold you down, I serve a God that will resurrect you with his spirit. Amen. I serve a God that will bring you back and show them how powerful you really are because of the power that's in you that comes from him. All right. So today, I want to tell everybody under the sound of my voice, yeah. rise. Yeah. Don't let them take you there, but just rise, amen. Yeah. Don't let them make you there, go there, but just rise, amen. Because once again, you, once again, you got to understand who you are and whose you are. I belong to God, so I won't let you take me out of my character again. Yeah. Because you already, you already have a certain a, a thought about who I am. You already have a, 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 a preconceived notion about who I am and who I am by culture and by nature. But I'm not going to let you pull me out of character. I'm going to stay to, I'm going to stay true to who I am because I know God and he's my father and I'm a child and I'm a representative of the kingdom. So I won't let you take me there, man. Sometimes people, they dig you. Yeah. They dig you. Yeah. They push those buttons. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, and if I can be honest, sometimes those who are closest to you, uh -huh. they know you, uh -huh. and they know what button to push. All right. All right. They, they, they know exactly what sets you off. Yeah. Yeah. They know how to make you go off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but don't let them cause you to get out of character. Amen. Amen. I, I know you want to say, don't make me go there. Right. And watch this. As soon as you go there, I knew you want a real Christian. Yeah. All right. All right. As, soon as, you, as soon as you go there, I knew you weren't really about God. Yeah. Right. As soon as you overstep that bounds, as soon as you cross that line, I knew you weren't really about it. Yeah. Right. I knew you weren't really about it. Right. But stay in character, amen. Yeah, amen. And don't let us take you there. That's all. Stay. Yeah.